G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, over the years I've done quite a bit of backyard melting, mainly aluminium, and lately I've moved up to brass. And I've used several furnaces. Uh, I've got an outside brick one that I use, it's wood fired and it uh, uses forced air. I've got a blower, so it works like a forge, and that melts down big quantities of aluminium at virtually no cost because I've just used scrap pallet timber. So that's a brick, all brick, just old incinerator bricks and uh, it's not thermally insulated in any way but there's so much heat that yeah, it melts down like crazy. But of course you don't always want to do a lot of uh, aluminium, you only want to do small quantities. So I made this little gadget which is a a coffee tin furnace and it just uses a large LPG torch or propane for the people in the USA and this is just you know no regulator it just dumps it straight in these don't need a regulator and uh, that melts down quite sizable you know amounts of aluminium and it's just done a lot of work, a lot of work. And when I made this, of course, I just did it by the seat of my pants. And it's showing uh, some wear and tear, let's put it that way. We'll look inside and I'll show what it looks like after doing probably mm, 20 or 30 melts, I suppose, over the years. You can see things are wearing away. And originally this liner this insulation came out to about, oh well, I suppose, yeah, about here. So it's lost about a, a finger thickness, a finger thickness, I'll say that again, um, at the thickest part, and it's lost a couple of fingers on the thin parts. But you can see how it's, it's all flaking away. And in the bottom, you can see all the loose stuff. Oh, there's bits of slag and there's all sorts in there and I haven't worried about that it doesn't affect the thermal efficiency of the thing it still works okay but it'll get to a point where it'll need to be relined the actual tin can standing up quite well so you can see that that actually insulates pretty bloody well I mean it's not a thing of beauty it's just meant to do the job and that's all it is to it so anyway when I did this I lined this with perlite and ordinary household cement, bright, brightened cement it's called in Australia. They had a mixture of three of perlite to one of cement, okay? And uh, I thought at the time that would be it, and I, but I, I thought since I, I could have gone to probably 50-50, which is what I see other people doing who make up these furnaces, and it looks pretty good the original finish but you don't get to see it after it's been going so you don't know whether it stands up to the heat any better than this or not and anyway if I ever do this again I will bump up the cement factor more than what I've got I think it would help but uh, there's a lot of heat in these things and it gets a real beating so yeah next time I would use refractory cement and I'd go probably yeah, probably 50-50 with it and uh, with perlite and see how that goes. It's all trial and error. Okay, let's look at the new uh, furnace I've made recently and I've been using. And it was made out of an old um, LPG gas cylinder. And there's a series of videos on this. You would have seen it. It works pretty damn well. This won't get hot enough to melt brass, not properly. To melt brass you have to have more heat than, than this type of torch can put out. Even being in a confined area, it's just, just not hot enough. So anyway, we'll look at the new one, which will melt brass, and it is a lot hotter. Okay, you would have all seen this, and it's actually stood up to the heat pretty damn well. When I did this, I 
I didn't actually strip off the old paint. I just went straight over it with Potbelly Black, and you can see it, you know, despite the enormous heat it's got in it, because the burner is much, much larger. It's as big as the diameter of this pipe. It stood up pretty well. There's some flaking around here. And uh, overall, paint's not bad. But how's it, how's it stood up inside? That's the big question. And this is what this video is about. And when I did this, I did the bottom part at uh, the base at uh, four to one perlite, four perlite to one of um, refractory mortar, which is what they recommended um, on the internet. And I did the lid at three perlite, um, one refractory mortar, because uh, I just thought I'd try two variations and see how they both stood up to the heat. So let's have, open her up and have a look at the, the damage that's been caused. Right, well if you look at the lid, which was the higher concentration of uh, refractory cement, you can see, see how it's flaking, look, see that? So the heat's affecting it around here, well it's not because it was on the edge of the the bottom bit, but you can see that the heat has done the same thing to this as it's done to the the old coffee tin furnace. So that was three to one, and down the bottom we've got four to one. I will zoom in on that. Okay, so here's the bottom bit, and you can see that as the heat's gone in, it's all the blast is the main issue. It's uh, look, see how that's crumbling. It's all just on the surface, but it's crumbling. And that's after about five or six uses. Now I did have people say to me, "Look, it's going to deteriorate," and I knew it was going to deteriorate, but I thought it would do a bit better than this as we're using refractory mortar. I've still got refractory mortar left, so when I get to the point where I have to reline this, I'll just use the same again. I'll probably bump up the ratio so it's more in, in line with the lid. But I thought I'd show you what the state of play is after having used this. You know, you can see that this isn't going to be a permanent uh, form of insulation, it's going to deteriorate and it's doing that. Whether refractory cement would be better and at the higher ratio, you know, roughly 50-50, which wouldn't be as good an insulator, I don't think, but it's hard to say, you know, this is certainly a good insulator, there's been no heat comes through the outside really to speak of it's been very very good the whole thing didn't cost a lot of money to do but i thought i'd give you a heads up on how this thing's standing up to the massive amount of heat that goes in there i mean it is really enormous and the whole inside basically glows red hot when it's uh, on full bottle but anyway just a quick one to show you. So if you're going to make one of these, think about the mixture, look around, try and find some videos or some information from people who've actually made these, used them, and, you know, that will show you what occurs because I couldn't see any. You get plenty of people show you the good side of things, but you don't get many people showing you the bad side of things, you know, and everything's perfect, you know, it's a wonderful world, but the world doesn't work like that, and... I'm quite happy to show you the bad and the good, and this is definitely not perfect. Okay, hope you enjoyed it, got something out of it. Any comments would be much appreciated. The mixture thing is, yeah, it's a big question. So anyway, that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Cheers.